This lesson is for section 8.5 on variation functions. Now today in our lesson, we're gonna be working exclusively with word problems, but you already have seen variation functions way back in chapter seven. This is one of the last lessons that we worked on in chapter seven. Remember a variation function is, I'm gonna use the multiply multiply property. So I'm gonna come up with a table of values here. Let's say X is two, four, and eight. And then our Y values are, let's do 48, um, 12, and three, okay. Now for our variation here, this is an inverse variation because as one is going up here, you can see that the other values are going down. So as X goes up, Y goes down. So this is inverse variation. We can also see this variation because our multiplier here is two, while over here, our multiplier is, is, multiplier is one over four, which is the same as one over two squared. So this would be a function that we'd write in the form Y is equal to K times one over X squared. So that would be the general form. Now in this case, um, they're not gonna give you a table of values. Instead, they will give you probably one coordinate and they will tell you in words how um, the, the variables are related to one another. So I think it's a little bit easier than having to come up with the equation yourself, but because it's a word problem, it does make it trickier. So our objective for today is to be given a real world situation. And we'll see that one variable is proportional to a non-integer power of another variable, okay? After that, we determine the proportionality constant, which is that K value I was talking about and then we'll use the resulting variation function as a mathematical model to answer other questions. Now it really doesn't matter to me if you choose to use x and y for your independent and dependent variables, but I'm gonna use um, letters to actually represent speed and power um, as opposed to x and y. So I'm gonna let s equal the speed of the ship and p is equal to the horsepower of your engines. So you don't have to do it like I did, but um, I know I always use X and Y and I wanted to switch things up a little bit. So S stands for speed of your ship and P is the horsepower of your engines. Now the hard part here is making sure we have the correct independent and dependent variables. Okay, so let's just think about it logically. Um, your speed of the ship depends on the horsepower. So, you know, the more power is coming from your engines, the faster your ship will go, not vice versa. So um, in this case, P is the independent variable, so we'll list that one first, and then S is your dependent variable, so speed depends on how much power it's getting, okay? So um, this is definitely gonna help us write our coordinate pair, but now we wanna come up with a general equation too. So let's go back to the sentence that says, the speed of the ship is proportional to the seventh root of the power, okay? Now in this case, um, when it says is proportional, they're basically saying it's directly, um, or it's a direct variation. Okay, so it directly varies with the power. So speed of the ship, S, is directly varying, so is proportional, means K times a power of your um, independent variable. So in this case, the seventh root, the seventh root of P, okay? So this is the general equation here. Now what I have to do is find the particular equation, right? That's the, the first question here is write the particular equation. So that means I'm finding K. The only way to find K though is to substitute a P comma S value. So here I have 30 knots, which represents a speed. So I have 30 for the S variable and 45,000 horsepower. So I have the point 45,000 comma 30. So to find K, I substitute that back into the equation here. So I have 30 equals K times the seventh root of 45,000. So if I wanna isolate K, I'm gonna divide out the seventh root of 45,000. So this is something that I would store in my calculator because it's probably gonna give me some kind of crazy irrational number. All right, so I went ahead and I solved for that K value already. So I'm gonna stow it now. So hit stow and then alpha K. So I'm, so I'm storing it as K, it doesn't have to be K, but I'm storing it as K. So there's the number stored. Now, a lot of you guys don't have the same calculator that I'm using. Now what you're gonna have to do if you don't have this particular type of calculator is you're gonna have to hit the number seven first. So if you wanted to find a seventh root, you have to hit seven first, then go to math, and then scroll down to where it says the xth root, okay? If I hit this, on my calculator, it's gonna adjust it for me, but on yours, it'll just stay, stay seven, and then next to it will be the xth root. So see how mine put the seven up here? Um, but yours won't, which is no big deal. You just fill in the um, radical like you normally would, okay? So then you would type in 45,000 and so on. Now, let's say you weren't comfortable with the um, you know, nth root at all. You can always change this number to um, one with rational power. So let's change uh, this to 30 over 45,000 to the 1 seventh power, okay? You can calculate that and you'll get the exact same K value. So anyhow, now I have my K value, okay? So my particular equation should be S equals, and I'm just gonna use um, a decimal here, 6.49. So it's approximately 6.49. 
So k is about 6.49. Now, again, you want to keep using your stored value. You do not want to just use 6.49 because that would not be very accurate. But you have 6.49 times the seventh root of p. So this is the uh, particular equation to answer part A. Now, in part B, it says the engines are capable of producing 90,000 horsepower. How fast would you expect the ship to go if the captain gives the orders full speed ahead? So in this case, we want to max out the horsepower, which is 90,000. So we want to know what is the speed when the horsepower is 90,000. So we're inputting 90,000 into our function. Now again, this is a stored value, so make sure that you are entering it using the k value that you stored. So you're going to hit k times the seventh root of 90,000. And in your calculator, you should end up with approximately uh, a speed of 33.1 knots. Okay, so we have a speed of 33.1 knots. Okay, now in part C, it says, does doubling the power cause the speed to double? Now in this case, I want to look at some actual values that we know in our function. We have the point 45,030, which means that at 45,000 horsepower, so that's the, the uh, output of the engine, you're going to get a speed of 30 knots. Now if we maximize the horsepower engine, 90,000, we end up with only 33.1 knots. So clearly here we're doubling our power right, from 45,000 to 90,000, we're doubling our power, but it does not double our speed. So the answer to this question is no. But I want to find out what factor it is changing by, because it does increase the speed, but I want to know by how much it's increasing the speed. So let's take a look at our general function. We have s is equal to some k value, which um, I'm just going to abbreviate as k for right now, times the seventh root of uh, p. Now, if we double p, so if we take k times the seventh root of 2p, what's actually happening to our value for s? Well, if we compare, this is, um, this is going to equal k times p to the 1 seventh, right? And this will equal k times 2p raised to the 1 seventh, which is equal to k times 2 to the 1 seventh times p to the 1 seventh. So if we take a look at these two, okay, in general, k values are the same, so that's not going to account for any difference. The p to the 1 7th is the same, so that won't count for any difference. This is how they differ, a factor of 2 to the 1 7th power. So this compared to uh, 30 compared to 33.1, this is 2 to the 1 7th power times more than 30. So if I took 30 and I multiply that by 2 to the 1 7th power, I should end up with 33.1. And when you actually test to see if that's true, here you can see I did 30 times 2 to the 1 7th power. I got 33.122, which is the same as when I took the k and the seventh root of 90,000. So I get the exact same value. So um, doubling the speed actually um, causes the, I'm sorry, doubling the power, okay, causes the speed to change, to increase. So speed increases by a factor of 2 to the 1 7th power. Okay, so doubling causes the speed to uh, doubling the power causes the speed to increase by a factor of two to the one seventh. Okay, now for example two, I would like you guys to pause the video and make sure you read the problem so you're familiar with it. Um, if you are comfortable, go ahead and answer the questions, check with the key, and if you get everything right, you're done with the lesson. You obviously don't need to watch the rest of this, but if, even if you get some of the parts wrong, make sure you do rewatch this so you can understand where your mistakes were. All right, so I'm going to start right away just by um, defining our variables because I'm assuming that you've read the problem. Now I'm going to make L the length of the river, and I'll make A the area of the basin that this uh, river drains, or any river drains. Now in this case, L is the dependent variable, A is the independent variable, so we would have the ordered pair A comma L, and that's because the area of the basin, the larger the area, the longer the length, so the length depends on the area. Um, in this case, they do give you one ordered pair. So here, I would write that order pair as 500,000, 3,034. Now, to write the general equation, I need to go back to the original um, paragraph here, which says the length of the river is approximately proportional to the 0.6 power of the area. So if I were to just um, translate that into you know, an equation, I have length, L, is approximately proportional. So remember, that's direct variation. So we have K times the 0.6 power of the area. So area to the 0.6th power. Now in this case, the 0.6th power, that's like writing um, you know, 6 tenths, which is equivalent to 3 fifths. So I'm just going to rewrite this as 
the length is equal to k times a to the 3 fifths. So this is the general equation here. Now I have to find the particular equation by finding that k value here. So to find that k value, I need to substitute in these, this um, l comma a pair, a comma l ordered pair here. So I have 3034 is equal to k times 500,000 raised to the 3 fifths power. Now to isolate k, I would obviously just divide that 500,000 to the 3 fifths power. So I have k is equal to 3,034 over 500,000 raised to the 3 fifths. Now that approximate value, I worked this out in the calculator already, is um, 1.155. So that's approximately 1.155. Um, oops, 1.155. There we go. So if I want to write the particular equation, okay, it should be L length is equal to 1.155. 155 times a to the 3 fifths. Now, of course, remember, you need to make sure you store that value. This is not the value that you should use every time you punch something in your calculator. You need to make sure you store, whoops, store that value. Okay, that's just an approximation. So there's our particular equation. Now, to answer part B, um, I hope I'm saying this right. It says the Suwannee River flows from the Okefenokee Swamp. I love saying that word. That's a cool word. To the Gulf of Mexico. It drains an area of about 15,000 square kilometers. According to the model, how long is the Suwannee River? So in this case, they're asking you to find a length and you know the area. The area is 15,000 square kilometers. So in this case, I'm going to let you try this one completely on your own since this is just plugging it right into our function. Make sure you do have your stored value and then you can go ahead and check with the key. And then we'll move on now to part C. Now part C is a little bit trickier because in this case um, they give you the length. They say the longest river in the world is 6,700 kilometers. So we're going to write length is 6,700 kilometers. Approximately what area of land does this, this river, the Nile River, drain? So we want to find an area. Now if I just plug it right into our function we have um, 6,700 is equal to k times a to the 3 fifths. Now again k is not a variable. We know this value. It's stored already. Okay, so if I divide out k Again, this is a known value, it's not a variable. I'm left with a to the 3 fifths. Now, the reason why I've, I said this problem was tricky is because some of you forget how to solve for a and how to isolate a. If you think back to our exponents chapter, to isolate a, we had to raise both sides of this equation to the 5 thirds power. And the reason why we do that is because we want a to the first power. That's how we solve for a, right? So we want a to the first power. So we raise it to the reciprocal power, and we do that on both sides. So we have 6,700 over k raised to the 5 thirds. This is the actual value, so this is your exact value for A, okay? And then if you were to find the approximate value of your area, you would type all that into your calculator, um, and I've already done that ahead of time, so we end up with 1,872,414.7 uh, square kilometers. Okay, so that's our answer. Um, again, this would be our approximate once we type it all into our calculator, and this is our exact with the k value that has been stored, okay? All right, that is the end of the lesson, um, so very nice job. Just to reiterate what we did, um, we started with, you know, a word problem that will explicitly tell you how something is proportional. Either they'll tell you inverse or directly, um, and then from there you come up with a particular equation. Based off of your particular equation, you'll answer other questions, like for example here when we wanted to solve for the length, and here when we wanted to solve for the area. So I know that those are pretty similar to what we've done all year long, but uh, they can get a little tricky, so make sure you are ready and prepared to work tomorrow. Nice job. See you tomorrow.